Okay, here we have two different uh, functions that have been graphed. Uh, here we have y equals x squared and y equals x cubed. And this presentation, it's designed mainly to introduce features of the y equals x cubed uh, graph. So this is a, a cubic function. So let's go ahead and write this is a cubic function, whereas this is a quadratic function. And this means it's a quadratic function because it has an x squared here. It's a cubic function because we've got an x cubed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to examine the similarities and differences between these two, uh, these two graphs and these two functions, which you've probably come across before. And in doing so, we'll learn a little bit about why they look like they do. So let's have a quick look at these two graphs, graph below. And there's one main difference that might jump out at you when you're comparing each of these graphs. Specifically, on the right-hand side of, each, of the origin on each of these graphs, we seem to have somewhat similar looking curves in that we have curves that start at the origin and then they increase and it seems that the, the, the y values are increasing faster than the x values on both, si on both sides here, on the right-hand side of the origin. But on the left-hand side, we have quite a different story. Uh, for this quadratic function, we have only positive y values, whereas for this cubic function we have negative y values. And we'll examine why that's the case in a moment, uh, why that's a consequence of the algebraic construction of these functions. The other feature we may notice is that f on this right hand side of the graph for, uh, for all values greater than x equals 1, we have uh, y increase, the y values increase at a slower rate than than for the cubic function. So for instance, if we were to have a look at, uh, at x equals 2 here, we have x equals 2 is associated with a y value of 4, whereas in this cubic function we've got x equals 2 is associated with a y value of 8, which suggests that the y values are increasing after x equals 1 much more rapidly for the cubic function than for the quadratic function. Okay, well examining that value, x equals 2, is actually quite interesting, especially when we evaluate what happens at x equals 2 and at x equals minus 2 for each of these graphs. So let's go ahead and, and just, uh, just consider those two values. So let's consider that at x equals 2 here, we have y equals 2 squared. So y equals 2 squared. 2 squared equals 4. We can go ahead and plot that on our, on our quadratic function here. So 2 units right at the origin, 4 units up. Moreover, when we have x equals minus 2, we have y equals minus 2 squared. Minus 2 squared, a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 2 squared equals positive 4. We can go ahead and graph this as well. So there's going to be 2 units left of the origin and 4 units up. So we've discovered here that the reason that we have no negative y values associated with this quadratic graph is the property of negative numbers. Uh, that is that when you multiply a negative number by a negative number, you always get a positive number. Consequently, if we substitute any positive x value or any negative x value into this function, we're always going to get a positive y value. Consequently, all the y values, all the y coordinates of these points are going to be positive. But that's not the case for this cubic function. Let's examine why. Well, let's, let's substitute these same two points in here. So at x equals 2, we have y equals 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So we have x equals 2, y equals 8. Let's go ahead and plot that. x equals 2, it's 2 units right of the origin and 8 units up. Whereas when we have x equals minus 2, we have y equals minus 2 cubed. So here a negative times a negative is a positive, and then times a negative again is a negative. So this is going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. Let's plot this as well. So this is 2 units left of the origin and 8 units down. Right, so we've discovered here that the reason this left-hand side of the graph is different from this left-hand side of the graph is that when, it's, it's the property of the algebraic construction here, for the quadratic function, a negative times a negative is a positive, but for the cubic function, 
a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative number. So that means if we substitute a positive x value into this equation, we'll get a y value that is positive. But if we substitute a negative value, we'll get a y for x. We'll get a y value that is negative. That's why these graphs look so different on the left-hand side. Okay, well, that's interesting. Let's have a quick look at, at what the implications are for two important features of graphs. And that is, let's have a look at the domain of each graph, the range of each graph, and also let's have a look at whether they are odd or even functions. So firstly, the domain. You might recall that the, the domain is the set of possible x values that we could input into this equation. Well, for both equations, we could input any x value here. There are no x values that we could, that if we input them, we'd get some, some inconsistency or some inconceivable y value on the, the left-hand side of this equation. So consequently, the domain for both, the domain is all real x all real x. We could substitute any real x in here. Is this right? Domain, range, and odd, or even. So we could substitute any real x value into either of those, these equations and we get a valid y value as an output. So consequently, all real x is the domain. What about the range? Well, here we can never we can never have a negative y value. So consequently, we could never input an x an x value in here and retrieve a negative y value. We do have y equals zero at x equals zero, but apart from that, all the y values are greater than zero, and they extend, you know, forever upwards, so all the way to infinity. So what we've got here is the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero, greater or equal to zero. Alternatively, the range here, for any, we can have any value of y uh, could be output from this equation. Any negative value or positive value or zero value of y is going to be associated with a positive or a negative or, or a zero value of x. So consequently, the range here is all real y. And that's interesting that we have this different, this different, these different ranges. And again, they're a consequence of the property of multiplying negative numbers and whether the, the product of two, you know, the fact that the product of two negative numbers is a positive number, but the product of three negative numbers is a negative number. That's the reason we've got these different ranges. Finally, let's consider whether each of these functions is odd or even. And we could do this in two ways. The first way we could do it is simply look at this graph and say, ah, well, this graph it has uh, symmetry around the y-axis. If we were to rotate this graph uh, in the, in the y-axis, or if we were to flect it in the y-axis, we'd get exactly the same graph that we started off with. And consequently, we could say that it is even. An alternative uh, way of finding out whether or not it's even or odd is we could recognize that we could rewrite this function as f of x equals x squared. This captures the same idea as y equals x squared. And then we could examine what happens when we substitute minus x into this equation. So let's evaluate f of negative x. So here we'd get negative x squared, negative, negative x squared. And negative x squared is x times x is x squared, and negative times a negative is a positive, so this is x squared. Well, this is the same as our original fx, because x squared equals fx. So here we have f negative x equals fx, and this, this is the definition of an even function. All even functions have this property. So consequently, we can say that y equals x squared is an even function. Well, what about y equals x cubed? Again, we could consider uh, this both graphically and algebraically. Well, graphically, we can see that this function has point symmetry around the origin. So if we were to rotate this graph around the origin, 180 degrees, we would get exactly the same graph as as we started. So we could say that this, we could say here that this graph is odd. Alternatively, if we wanted to figure this out, we could recognize that y equals x cubed, that's the same as saying f of x equals x cubed, they're broadly the, the same function. And then we could examine what happens when we input 
minus x. So f of minus x, f of minus x is minus x cubed. Minus x cubed, that's minus x times minus x times minus x, which is going to equal minus x cubed, since the negative times the negative times the negative is a negative, and x times x times x is x cubed. And this is going to be exactly the same as this function, except with a negative value out the front. So this is going to be equal to negative f of x. In other words, f of negative x is going to equal negative f of x. And this is the condition that all odd functions obey. So consequently, we've proved both from a graphical perspective and an algebraic perspective that this is an odd function. Okay, well hopefully you have a, a more thorough understanding of the, the function of y equals x cubed and more broadly of cubic functions. But certainly these are the differences and the similarities between quadratic and cubic functions.